Hey dude, Huawei. You may have heard of them. They were a super popular phone manufacturer, and at one point they made over 10% of the phones sold on Earth. They sold more phones than Motorola, HTC, and at one point, even Samsung. But then they disappeared almost instantly. In fact, they're even banned in several countries. So, what happened? And how do you even get your company banned? Huawei was started in Shenzhen, China in 1987 by a military engineer named Ren Zhengfei. The name Huawei loosely translates to either Splendid Achievement or Action for China. Ren started the company with just $5,000 by importing and then selling telephone equipment he bought from Hong Kong. Over the following years, Huawei invested heavily into production until they were able to manufacture and sell their own telephone switches. Huawei's first major breakthrough was their CNC-08 digital telephone switch in 1993. It proved that Huawei could mass-produce parts at a competitive price, and it ended up selling quite well. Thanks to the success of this device, they were awarded several contracts with new clients, most importantly being the Chinese government. Huawei started working very closely with the Chinese government, and they continue to do so to this day. Throughout the rest of the 90s, Huawei became well known within China for its competitively priced routers, modems, and mobile phones. The early 2000s were kind of a breakout time for Huawei. They began to branch out into the international market. In just two years, they had expanded their business worldwide, raising their sales by 500% and scoring contracts with big players like IBM. In 2004, they released their first mass market globally available phone. It was a feature phone called the C300. By 2005, they were making more money abroad than they were in China. The next big revolution came in 2008 when HTC and Google released the first Android phone. I made a whole video about it, you can check it out right there. The most popular open sourced mobile software at the time was Windows CE, much to my commenter's chagrin. Yes, Symbian existed, but it was only made open source in 2008, meaning by the time any manufacturer could use it, Android was already there. So in the time before Android, a third party manufacturer's only real option for an OS was Windows CE and Windows CE was wildly outdated. The introduction of Android was huge for third-party phone makers like Huawei. They released their first Android-powered device in 2009, the U8220. After that went well, they began pumping out Android phones with a focus on budget and mid-range markets, and they began to take off. In 2009, Huawei also entered a deal with chip manufacturer TSMC. TSMC had previously partnered with Apple to make chips for the iPhone, and just like Apple, Huawei wanted to build their own custom line of chips for their phones. They launched the K3 platform, which would eventually become the Kirin line of chips, designed specifically and exclusively for Huawei phones. At the time, they were pretty much the only Android manufacturer doing this, and this marks the beginning of a real golden age for Huawei. I found conflicting reports on how popular Huawei was during this time, but some sources cite them as high as 4% market share in 2012. That puts them at number three globally. But like I said, there's varying reports. It's hard to say who was winning the budget and mid-range Android phone category. It was a toss-up in the early 2010s. Fierce competition between LG, Sony, Motorola, and Oppo made the market super competitive. But by far, Huawei's biggest competitor was Xiaomi. Every time Huawei gained market share, Xiaomi was right behind. Xiaomi was another phone company that had gained massive popularity in the 2010s with crazy marketing and selling their phones almost exclusively online. Let me know down below if you're interested in that. I might make a video about it one day. To help compete, Huawei released the Honor brand in 2011, designed specifically to combat Xiaomi. Honor was technically a separate company that was owned and operated by Huawei. They sold their phones exclusively online with competitive pricing. In 2012, Huawei launched the Ascend line. This line was designed specifically to break into the European market, but it also saw success worldwide. In 2014, LG bought Motorola, leapfrogging the rest of the competition. With Huawei now in fourth place and Xiaomi right behind, they kept going. They were super popular in China. They had seen success in Europe thanks to the Ascend line, so they decided to focus all their efforts on the US market. They saw their first major success in the United States in 2015 with the release of the Google Nexus 6P. It was a phone designed and developed by Google, but it was produced and manufactured by Huawei. The phone was a huge success and it helped Huawei get some brand recognition in America. They also partnered with Microsoft to build some Windows computers and they continued working closely with IBM. However, thanks to their Chinese government ties, Huawei never saw major success in the US despite their best efforts. Their phone and device businesses continued to flourish, especially in Europe and China. They continued to raise their market share, followed closely by Xiaomi 
and eventually they widened the gap. In 2015, they also released their most popular phone yet, the Huawei Mate 9, which sold over 15 million units. They followed it up with some more absolutely amazing phones. The Mate 10 line sold 17 million units, and so did the Mate 20 line. In 2018, their P20 line sold over 32 million units. The Mate 30 and P30 line in 2019 was also super successful, with 12 and 20 million units respectively. They peaked in 2020, with an almost 11% market share worldwide. That year in quarter two, they even sold more phones than Samsung, but their success wasn't going to last forever. Thanks to their roots with the Chinese government, Huawei had seen limited success in the US. They almost acted like another branch of the Chinese military, supplying them with a lot of their technology. Accusations about the company using their devices to spy on other nations began spreading, although to this day there's no proof of that ever happening. On top of this, the US was engaged in a trade war with China. It's a complicated topic about geopolitics. I won't get into it here, but basically there was a lot of eyes on products coming into the US from China. In 2019, the company was properly confronted by the US government. In May of that year, the Trump administration added Huawei and several other Chinese organizations to the entity list. This blacklist basically meant that Huawei couldn't do business with any American companies. Hey, I know this is kind of a political topic, but this is not a political channel, so please resist the urge to comment something below. I don't need to hear who you voted for. All right, back to the video. Obviously, this was a huge hit. Their deals with Google, Microsoft, and IBM were no more. They didn't sell a lot of phones in the United States, but they did do a lot of business with US-based companies, especially Google. The US is where they got most of the components for the devices, and they even made devices with several American companies. Almost overnight, a huge chunk of their revenue just disappeared. Huawei did try to fight back though. They filed a legal motion, declaring the move unconstitutional, but it went nowhere. In June, they even sued the US Department of Commerce over the entity list. But again, nothing came of it. The government granted Huawei several reprieves of the bill until it eventually went into effect almost a year later, on April 1st, 2020. And if you remember, that's like the height of their success. Over 130 US-based companies submitted applications to be allowed to work with Huawei, but none of them were granted. The US even changed presidents to the Biden administration, but they didn't overturn the bill either. Seriously, dude, I'm trusting you. It seems that the official stance of the US government is that Huawei is a risk they are not willing to take. Quickly after the ban was put in place, Huawei sold their Honor brand to another Chinese company that was exempt from the ban. Huawei was about to lose a whole bunch of money, and this was a way of getting some of that back. The first few of the new Honor phones under new management were China exclusive, and even today, all of their phones are not sold in the US. Huawei's biggest loss from this bill was that they could no longer work with Google. This meant that a lot of things had to change. For one, Android is owned by Google. This is a little complicated, so let me break it down. Base Android is still owned by Google, but it's open source, so it was still fair game for Huawei to use. However, Google can't sell Huawei a licensed version of Android. The licensed version of Android includes most of the features that people came used to in Android phones. So they still could technically use Android, but it wasn't the same. So they decided the best decision was just to build an OS from scratch, with no connection to Google whatsoever. On top of that, their deal with TSMC fell through. So now, in order to build a phone, Huawei had to make their own OS and find a company who was willing to make them chips. In August of 2019, they unveiled Harmony OS. This was their own custom OS for their phones that had been made in-house. This conference ushered in a new age for Huawei one completely free of any US company involvement. This was also an era of significantly less profits. As the US company ban came into effect of April of 2020, and they sold the last of their US related phones and devices, their market share began to plummet. They couldn't sell anything in the US anymore, and all of their phones, starting with the Mate 30 Pro, had no Google features, and no Huawei Kirin chips. Their market share in Europe quickly fell and so too did their global relevance. Their worldwide market share dropped slowly and steadily until they were surpassed by Xiaomi in 2021, and ever since then, they haven't caught up. They've not been able to take back any market share, and their business continues to steadily decline as they lose more and more customers. While this is happening, the US government and the FCC continue to pass bills and litigations to restrict Huawei. Several more countries banned the company completely. This includes Japan, the UK, Australia, and several European countries. Nowadays, just about the only country that buys Huawei phones is China. And remember, before the ban, more than half of their business was coming from outside of China. Anywhere else on the globe, they are a fraction of their former presence, if not completely banned. Seriously, if you live somewhere other than China and you still actively buy Huawei phones, let me know down below. I'd love to hear about it. Within China, the Huawei brand continues to push the boundaries of what a phone can be, even selling the world's first trifold phone this year. But they're almost entirely confined to China's market. Once a bastion of competitively priced budget and mid-range phones, they are now completely wiped off the map. Thanks to the ban of one country, 
almost the whole world doesn't buy their phones anymore, and they've lost almost all of their brand trust. But of course, thanks to all of my members right here, you can check out my Instagram at owncook.mp4. I have more videos just like this one. And party on, dudes.